Good day, I am Andrew Medina from 3MEA and for today I will be giving you a video procedure on how I came up with my answers for the assignment of kinematic diagrams. The first mechanism we have the rock crusher. Now before we make a kinematic diagram which is basically just a simplified illustration of what this object does and how it moves, um, we have to first look at the purpose of this mechanism or this machine and as the name implies it crushes materials that we can assume is placed in between these two plates. Now this mechanism its purpose is to transfer mechanical energy from this point to this point uh, and eventually crush materials that be, that are being placed here. So in making kinematic diagrams, we usually want to focus on two things, or keep in mind two things, which are the links and which are the pairs. So uh, we'll, we'll make one for each. Uh, we'll first focus on the links. So the first link we have here is the frame. Now the frame doesn't move. The, the rest of the machine moves based on the frame. So from the frame, you can see attached to the frame is a binary link. And as you can see from the machine, the machine wants the binary link to revolve around this frame. So we need to capture this motion. So it's turning, turns the binary link. And as you can see here, the binary link is connected to another binary link. So we have to place that. And the binary link is, this binary link is a binary link with a point of interest. And that point of interest being that point in which the rocks are being crushed. So that's our point of interest and this is our binary link. Finally, for our final link, we have a place that, uh, a link that keeps the whole mechanism together and allows for just this part to be moving and just keeps this part in place. So for our links, we have link one, we have link two, we have for this, this is the link 3 and then for this this is the link 4 so link 4 is the one that's crushing the rocks so from that we have pairs now pairs are more like the joints of the whole machine the whole mechanism uh, so for we'll draw the frame again but pairs don't have frames we'll just draw the whole basic we'll basically just draw the whole kinematic diagram again Make sure to capture the motion. So where are the joints that you see in this mechanism? So I see four joints. All these joints are revolutionary pairs, by the way. So for the first pair we have here, the second pair we have here, third pair, and finally the fourth pair. So the number of links, is four, and the number of pairs, Are also four. Now keep in mind these are all lower pairs. Uh, we haven't reached the point of these being higher pairs yet. So keep in mind these are lower pairs. Second mechanism we have the toggle mechanism. Now toggle mechanisms are basically just machines that uh, take force, obtain a large amount of force, and apply it to a small point, a small specific point. In this case maybe metal puncturing so this is the metal puncturing so that is the purpose of this whole machine so in drawing our kinematic diagram let's first take note of what would be our frame or what would be parts that wouldn't move and for me I'm, I'm just looking at this and I'm saying okay it's nailed down to the surface so it really wouldn't move so let's let, let they let these be our <coughs> excuse me let these be our frames so drawing the links, we have the frame frame one or link one. And as you can see, let's just start off from the first the frame and then let's 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 go up to where it generates the power and then finally where it would apply that power. So looking at this from the frame we have a binary link to the handle uh, appropriately named. So here we have a binary link and our handle is basically 
a binary link but with points of in with a point of interest that point of interest would be our handle so let's draw that we have the binary link and this is our point of interest we're gonna move down here and as you can see it's connected somewhere here and then this would allow this mechanism to move so we have a link here and another link here so our point of interest would be the handle in my opinion the handle is wrongly placed because you would need to pull this way uh, this is wrongly placed it should be here anyways so this is connected here and then this is connected as you can see to another frame so that also doesn't move okay so we have this is actually another binary link with another point of interest so that point of interest being the clamp vice where it would puncture metal sheets so looking at the links we have link one then we have link two our link three would be our binary link with point of interest and link four finally again here we see it only has four links let's also name this link one because it all is also the frame and it doesn't move now let us look at the pairs so we have a kinematic diagram for the pairs these are the joints let's remember these are the joints that allow our mechanism to have motion so for the first pair we have pair one pair two pair three and pair four now these pairs they only are moving so they only are revolute pairs they can only help the joints move they're not sliding pairs they're not they're not crushing anything so these are all these four pairs are revolutionary pairs so for our third mechanism we have the shear press now if we look at our second mechanism it is a metal puncturing metal sheet puncturing this mechanism this machine would actually be a metal slicing or metal cutting machine so let us again before we do that that is the purpose of this machine now before we look at the uh, before we create a kinematic diagram let's look at which part would likely not move or which part is would we call the frame so for me looking just right, looking here we can see that this this part wouldn't move we would move this we would move this this would move this would move so everything would revolve around this so this would be our frame actually so that's our frame okay and then now let's look at where do we get the force to actually slice these metal sheets we get the force from this this is the handle okay as you can see the the what do you call this the shearing press I'm sorry the shearing press already is cut already is cutting the metal sheets but if it weren't the handle would be maybe placed here and then this would be rise that this this cutting device would be maybe here so to cut the metal we would press down on this this lever and it would allow force to be generated and to be transferred into this cutting device so anyways our cut our handle is a binary link with a point of interest that point of interest being the handle so we're gonna draw our second link our second sorry our second pair Th that this would be the pair anyways this is a binary link and now this as you can see is connected to a binary link another binary link and this binary link now what's special about this is that it has a sliding sliding joint or sliding pair anyways we'll get to that later for now it's just a link so this link is connected here so well let's let's appropriately name our links so this would be link one the frame this would be link two the binary link with a point of interest this would be link three and finally this would be link four now let's look at the pairs this keeps the mechanism this allows mechanism to move so let's just draw the whole diagram again similarly as we draw it earlier 
forgot to draw this. Okay, so let's look at the pairs. I would say this is the first pair. This is the second pair. Now this is what makes this special. We have actually two pairs in one link. Okay, so we have the third pair, which is a revolution revolute pair. I'm sorry for if I said revolutionary pair earlier. I meant to say revolute pair. So this would be the third revolute pair, and the sliding joint would be the fourth revolute pair. Uh, not fourth revolute pair. It would be a, a single sliding pair. I'm sorry. So one, two, and three are revolute pairs, and four is a sliding pair. So for our first, fourth and final machine or mechanism, we have the power hacksaw. Now let's look again, what is the purpose of this machine? The purpose of this machine, we usually have uh, iron bars or a steel bar, and then it's this long slender uh, bar. And then what this power hacksaw would do is that it has usually has two blades here, and it would transfer mechanical energy from this device all the way here, and it would slice going back and forth and cutting the bars. So as, as it's slicing the bars, well, we could push the bar in and each part would be sliced, just like that. So that is the purpose of this machine. Let us look at what would be the frame of the machine. Now just looking at, the fr uh, just looking at this machine, I could see that this would be the frame. Just similarly to our problem one, this would be the frame. We see everything's almost similar here. So that is our frame. Let us draw it. Apologize for my drawings. <laughs> Anyways, so this is our frame. It is, as we can see again, it is attached to a binary link. So we have a binary link. And then we have um, another binary link. And this binary link is actually going to be attached to this whole machine or this whole this whole part of the machine, I'm sorry, this whole part of the machine, we could just label it as a sliding joint or as a sliding pair later. So as you can see, this whole thing just slides so we can just make it, simplify it as a single part of the machine. Now let us label our links. So for our frame, we have the first link, the second link connecting the frame to the, our third link, and finally, our fourth link. Now, let us not forget what we, what did we do for the first problem. We noticed that this, our second link, wants to rotate. Rotate to allow, allow force to be generated back and forth onto the workpiece. So let us appropriately draw that for our kinematic diagram. Our second link would be rotating. Okay, now let us move on to the pairs. Uh, we will just draw the same diagram. But this time, let us focus on the pairs. Okay, so for the same from question one. Our first pair would be a revoluting pair. Revolute pair, I'm so sorry. Uh, our our, our second pair would be here, the second joint would be here, another revolute pair. And then let's let's remember what made our third question so important and so different than the others. It had two pairs in one single link. So for our third pair, let's just put it here. Third pair is a revolute pair. And the fourth pair would be the sliding joint or the sliding sliding pair. So that is our pairs and that is our links. And let's capture the motion of link two.